Harrison, after having the spring to kind of get a feel for Ryan Flores' uh, defense, I, I guess just kind of what's your biggest impression of working with him a bit and, and what's different about the scheme? Biggest impression, um, I'd say he, he's, he, he knows what he wants. He, uh, He's assertive about what he wants, and you know he likes having his own style, and then kind of turning it over to his players. Um, so it's it's been great learning from him, and we've just kind of scratched the surface. So um, you know, it's, uh, you know, I think we've talked about it. it's it's kind of more more of an aggressive approach in general um, with things mixed in. Um, you can tell he he likes to be multiple with things and not just kind of stuck in one way. Um, so it's uh, it's fun to it's fun to learn new styles and new ways of doing things, and I'm sure we'll just keep building with that. <laughs> it's kind of uh, I was just talking to Carly actually, like doing this, um, you know, this press conference or whatever you want to call it. Like I haven't been to a meeting yet or anything. I just walked in and weighed in and then came in here. So. There's not uh, like it's kind of it's kind of like a weird way to start things, but um, I'm obviously very familiar with this with this building, um, with this area, and um, if it it's kind of just like coming back home basically. How many ways does uh, Flores' defense mesh with the way you like to play defense? Uh, I don't know if I could like sum up how many ways, but it's. And and you never really know till the game start, I guess. And we get into game planning, things sometimes get tweaked. But um, from what it seems like, it seems like something that just personally myself, um, it's it's very intriguing uh, the way we do things and um, the way we use uh, different players in different ways and um, kind of set the whole defense up to be a little more multiple. Um, yeah, so I think I think we can. We can do a lot of things and have a lot of success if we if we take advantage of those things as as players and kind of like Flo says, make it make it our defense and and take ownership in it. Harrison, I've been doing this for a while. How can you tell when a young player like Lewis Seen has taken that next step? Where it's, sometimes it's mentally as well as that that physical step for him. I think it's normally. I, I mean, I don't know if you can really blanket statement it, but. Um, I remember, I remember personally always feeling unathletic when I didn't know, didn't know exactly uh, what to look at or what I was doing and things like that. So I think when you get that, that feeling of like, oh, I can just go out there and be me, uh, is when you're, you're trending towards that. Like you're never gonna, you know, there's always gonna be things you gotta figure out and overcome, no matter how long you play or how good you are or what have you. But um, when you start feeling like you can just be the athlete that you always were as a kid and in high school is when is when you start to really become the player that 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 you should be oh no it's man i I still remember a few years it was mostly mostly early college um, <laughs> yeah not ideal kind of following up on that how much has your experience now? You know, how, how much does that compensate or help you out compared to what you could have done physically when you were that 22-year-old rookie? How much do you have to rely on that? On the, on the, the mental the experience? It obviously helps, and there's – I obviously have a, a good amount of experience, whether it's, whether it's game day experience or, you know, the amount of practice reps I've had um, and different schemes I've played in or played against – um, and then you kind of mix in how the game has evolved and how offenses have evolved. And so every now and then if, if you get a, if I find myself getting a little too um, like sure of myself with things, like the game changes. So it's not the information I have, it, it's not always true anymore. You got to keep updating it, you know, from time to time. Um, but those, those like kind of scars that you build from, Getting beat on certain things or um, successes that you've had, you know those those are just kind of ingrained somewhere somewhere in you that that pop up in split seconds before plays and stuff like that. So some of those are just there and you don't have to think about them much. And others, um, 
you learn like better ways to study, more effective ways for yourself um, to get results on game day instead of just like watching hours of film to, to say you did it. It's not always like productive. Um, you got to figure out what works for you and what works for for the opponent you're playing and kind of the mindset you should be in and stuff like that. So it's you know, it's always evolving, and I try to try to be mindful of that. Harrison, when it comes to Josh Metellus, last year you got some opportunities. Seems like he's in line to potentially get more. I, I guess what have you seen from his growth being in that room with him over the last few years? Yeah, yeah he's. Um, I would say his growth, like, you could see it when he first got here. Like, he's just a guy that no matter where you put him, he's going to do everything he can to be the best at that, whether I don't know, it's right guard on punt or safety or whatever. Um, and he's, he's, he's a really smart guy, and he's an explosive player and can do a lot of things, you know, athletically. So that that combination, I think it's just his confidence has grown over the years as he's he's made plays at pretty much every spot he's ever been put at, um, uh, and and not just not just in training camp or at practice, like it's the same thing on game day. Um, so it's just it's 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 really fun to watch. Like it's fun to be around guys like that who he loves the game. He could he could sit up there and run a meeting as a coach right now. Like he's <clears throat> he's he's got it that that well. Um, I learn a lot from him. Like he knows he knows more a lot of times than I do. So I'm trying to learn stuff from him too. Um, so he's great to be around, and it's it's a lot of fun to watch him. Yeah, this is your third uh, system in three years for the defense. Like, how much has your experience allowed you to speed up that process to learn something new, or is there still something that all players have to go through when you're you got a new, a new scheme being installed. It definitely helps to have experience in things, and you can say like, "Oh, this is just like that was," but we call it something else, which is what a lot of it is. Um, and then, like, there there'll be some wrinkles that I've never I've never done before, but you know, can pick up quicker because I understand like what we're trying to do. Normally, if you understand why you're doing the things instead of just saying like, okay, here's my job. I should line up here and do this. If you kind of understand the whole thing, it's easier to pick it up and then kind of transfer that to four or five plays that are similar. Um, so thinking more at that level, like more of a macro level kind of helps. Um, yeah. I mean, I'd say, I'd say that's about it. Um, just being open to learning too is important and figuring out the verbiage. Like a lot of times when you're, you forget, don't forget, but like, you know, you have a little, a break and you, you're not sure what you're supposed to say. But if you can, if you can switch that verbiage over as quickly as possible and talk like the coaches are talking, um, even if it means something that you used to call something else. So those things can get tricky, but they're, it's just memorization and repetition. And there's a business side too, but what is it for you guys when, you know, Daniel Hunter reports for camp after, you know, you don't really get into reading people's headlines and stuff, but what it means to have him in the building? Yeah, he's, um, you know, I think we all kind of know the type of player and the type of teammate he is. Uh, so it's obviously great that he's here. Uh, I, like you said, I don't, I don't really know exactly the details of things, but having him here is obviously um, a great thing for the Vikings. Kirk and Netflix and how much conversation has there been about that? What was the first part? Kirk Cousins and Netflix and has there been a lot of conversation about that? Are you a lot of questions about that when people see the inner side of football? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a – seemed like it was – seemed like people liked seeing Kirk in that, you know, kind of that, that light, um, which really is just – it's just Kirk. So I think that was my favorite thing about watching it is, like, he never is – fake about who he is. He just is who he is, and um, then he just goes about his business. And if you like it, that's cool. If you don't, that's whatever, too. Um, so it's nice to see. I think you know people kind of appreciate a lot of things about him after watching that, that series um, that maybe they didn't know beforehand, uh, especially you know kind of his toughness and, and the things he does in that regard. Uh, but it was, I thought it was good. It was fun to, it was fun to watch, you know. Not always trying to watch football in the off season, but it was uh, it was a good series for sure. One of the, one of the plays has been, and not just for Kirk, but for the other guys, um, 
Holmes and Mariota as well, is that it kind of showed a little bit more of the violence behind the game and the and the repercussions of the violence. I'm just curious, like as someone who experiences it more than any you know of us do, like how close did they get to giving a realistic viewpoint of what it's like to play an NFL game? Um, what happens afterwards? Yeah. In all fairness, I didn't watch like the third or f I skipped a few episodes in the middle. I just saw kind of <laughs> saw like two thirds of it. I might have missed the third one, um, but I think I'm just guessing. Um, it's it's probably hard to really grasp it all. Um, I remember why like I I watched there was one where Kirk was in the um, in the cold tub and one where like Mahomes was was working out with like an ankle or something. And uh, I was shocked at how like those guys could could do the interviews at that point in the season while hurting and doing those things. Um, I couldn't do that. Like I would just be too angry and mad, and it wouldn't it wouldn't go well. Um, so that's I mean those guys are those guys are, are pros. They're they're good at it. But um, yeah, the those things just add up. Like especially on a Monday or Tuesday. Just not in a good, in a good like mental state to be like friendly to people sometimes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So sorry in advance. Um, but yeah, you probably can't sum it up all the way from video. But I think they they did a pretty good job. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.